Let's just call it the way it is. Julius Randle sucks. Julius Randle's the reason the New York Knicks are now in a 3-1 to hole. Julius Randle never was a superstar. Julius Randle's no good for New York. And the first thing this team has to do when they're eliminated tomorrow night or Friday or Sunday or whenever it happens is find an NBA team willing to take on the contract of that no good waste of space on a basketball court. That being said, I think the Knicks win the next three. How you doing, everyone? What's going on, buddy? I just want to marvel. It's a beautiful day. It's sunny outside. Don't you be that guy. Don't something, be that guy. Don't be that guy. Something feels good today. I'm just in a great mood. Great yeah. to see you. How you doing? Of course you are. Yeah, would your Mets not play last <laughs> night? They did not, correct? Yeah, that, that's why you're in a good mood of my I, Knicks loss. Why can't Knicks I, in five. Why can't I just be happy? Because it's douchey for you to be happy. Why can't I just be in a good mood? That's why. You seem rather ornery today. Ornery today. What's up? You're ornery. Right? Ornery. I'm ornery yeah. because I've been telling you I've never wavered on Julius Randle. Yeah. And last night was the reason why. Because after the game, we all saw with our own two eyes, he has the balls to say after the game, maybe they wanted it more than us. Well, he's right. Maybe they wanted it more than us. I can tell you that. They don't want it more than Jalen Brunson. Did you watch the game? I can say I watched you every watched second the game. Everybody game. watched the game. Spot yeah. the lie. He's right. They do want it more. No, they want it more than him, dude. Well, yeah, yes, and he's a part of the team. But he's watching the that problem, he's watch, always been the problem. Watching that game last night, and we said this about Game Three, and it was stunning. And now we have to say it about Game Four, and forget the numbers because that's how box scores can be very deceiving. His effort from moment number one with turnover number one was not there. And that's mind-boggling. Like, you have every right to scream and yell about it. Yeah. I'm confused about it. Like, I I don't understand yeah. how from him in particular, yeah, there man. could be a lack of effort defensively right. consistently throughout a night in which you need to win a basketball game. Right. Had to I win don't, that game last night. Had I, to win it. I don't understand that. The body language, which we've seen before in the regular season from Julius, this is not surprising. Yeah. But to see that consistently throughout a game four, and not just throughout the game, but early in the game, when the Knicks turned the ball over five times in the first eight minutes, yeah. Like you started to see those shoulders slump. You started to see that look on his face that if you watch a lot of Nick basketball, which you clearly do, we've seen a lot of over the years. Yeah. But it's not something you expect. In a game four of the Eastern Conference semifinal. Not when Miami's not shooting the ball that well either. And that's why and I'm they're confused. keeping you in the game. And a good little five minute run gets you right back in a game. Might even give you the lead. And then you're putting your head down, you're charging, you know, uh, becoming, uh, you know, a black hole on the court. Uh, no one else gets the ball. No ball movement. Not playing defense. Uh, it is tragic. Tragic, tragic. tragic. Now, I don't know if I'd use the word tragic, tragic but okay. Tra- I'm going home. Okay, see you later. Tragic. I can't allow you to do the next four hours by yourself. <laughs> Why? It'll be a referendum on how much you hate the Knicks. No, no, no. I'm a call- fan. I'm calling out what I saw last yeah. night. I watched basketball last night, and the Knicks did not give in. Like, after Miami got off to the hot start that they did, the Knicks fought back. But what Eric Spolster and the Heat continuously did yeah. is they always responded every single time. Yeah. And what's kind of crazy about this series, four games in, is that everything the Knicks did clearly better than Cleveland in the first series, they are not doing nearly as good as Miami. I'll do you one better like than when that. When you look back at how they beat Cleveland, they beat the crap out of them on the offensive glass, right? Yeah. Well, you watched the fourth yeah. quarter last night. Miami had seven offensive rebounds in just the fourth quarter. That's in just stupid. the fourth quarter. I'll do you one better than that. And uh, I know I know you're going to agree with me, so I'm not saying anything that's all that crazy or shocking. What? Because I know you're going to agree with me. Your boy's being outcoached. Oh, that's not even a question. Your boy, Tom Thibodeau, is having another guy run circles around him coaching-wise. Yeah, no now, doubt. I'm not going to blame Tom Thibodeau for a guy making $30 million a year, no showing in the playoffs. No, I'm no, not. no, 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 no. Time out, time Go out. Go ahead. There's a clip from about a year ago, All right. and it rings very, very true this morning All or right. this afternoon. Theo Pinson and Reggie Bullock were on the Knicks from two okay. years ago. That's right. And Theo Pinson had a podcast. And Reggie Bullock, this was about six, seven months ago, we're talking about their year in New York. Yeah. And they talked about how much they loved it here, yeah. how much they loved Tom Thibodeau. And they said, yeah, you don't play defense, you're coming out the game. Right. And then Theo very quickly inserted a joke, <laughs> unless your name is Julius. And they cracked up. Right. So where you're wrong, and this has been going on forever, this is not a new criticism, but why not bring it up after game four? Julius Randle is the exception to every Tom Thibodeau rule. I can't argue that. And he always has been that. 
Now, I'm not saying OB Toppin looked good when he was on the floor in the first half. He didn't. He airballed the corner three. Like, he didn't look great. But OB Toppin will at least give you effort He's on trying. a consistent He's basis. Trying. He will try on yeah. a consistent basis. So when you say it's not all Fibido, the truth is it's on a lot of different people. Julius is going to take most of the heat because he's a quote-unquote star and because of the dumbass comedy man yes. after the game and because of the lack of effort. So he's going to be the yeah. guy who gets most of the attention. But this is a collective failed effort, and of course it includes the head coach. Yes, it includes everybody. Let's be fair about it. I know Jen Brunson tried his ass off last night single-handedly uh, trying to keep the Knicks in. He's not had a great series, to be fair. Uh, the fact that the New York Knicks appear to be this overmatched by a good, not great basketball team is unacceptable. It's one thing for Jimmy Butler to do the things that we've seen him do in three different cities. It's one thing even for Bam Adebayo to show a little resurgence like he hit the fountain of youth. I can accept that. I cannot accept the New York Knicks being dominated to every free ball, every 50-50 ball, no uh, presence on the that, glass. But, Craig, that's why. Shooting 20%. It's a joke. Well, the problem is they actually shot the basketball relatively well early on last yes. night. Like in the third quarter, and this was when you knew the game was over. I'm sure we all have these different moments when you say, okay, they're not winning. For me, it's when the Knicks shoot 10 of 12 to come out of the gate in the third quarter. And what happened? They never were able to really break through because Miami answered every single time. Every single time. And there's little things that Spolstra does. Like, Gabe Vincent didn't have the greatest shooting game, and I'm not bringing him up for any other yeah, reason yeah, yeah, other than yeah, yeah. his denial of Jalen Brunson was, like, hard to watch. Jalen Brunson had a difficult time getting the basketball across the timeline because Gabe Vincent had a plan. He's like, yeah. I'm going to make this man also work foul as him three hard, times. whatever, as hard as possible. <laughs> I mean, he did. He reached in three times. Okay, I'm going to make this man work as oh. hard as possible to just get the basketball across the timeline. So when Jalen Brunson misses a wide-open corner three yeah. with six minutes to go and it's an eight-point game, yep. who knows why? Maybe it's because of the ankle. Maybe it's because he had to work his ass off the entire night I mean, just getting the ball across half court. No, it's certainly part of it. They played very good defense and very physical defense, and I'm with you. You know, it's kind of like the Knicks-Cavs game one. If the refs ain't going to call, keep doing it. I, I the, the only play last night that I thought actually was dirty was uh, Martin putting his foot under Jalen as he came down from that top of the key three. Totally with it. Outside of that, I have no problem if you're going to play physical and the refs aren't going to blow the whistle, yeah. keep playing physical. This, this is. That was my only, I did think that was dirty. And, what, and guess what? They called yeah. it. They called a flagrant yes. one on it. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's a flagrant two. They're not throwing him out of the no, game, no. but they, they called it yeah, out. Yeah, I didn't like it. But they like reviewed it. it. They gave him the three free throws. They kept the basketball. Yep. But the New York Knicks are losing the Miami Heat the way the Cleveland Cavaliers lost to the New York yeah, Knicks. Yeah, I agree. You guys, rightfully so, pushed around the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're pushing your asses around. So I totally get why you're pissed off at Julius Randle. You know my opinion on him. I don't want to make this. I told I've you so. I told you fan. so. I've been with you. Uh, right. rock, so I've well, never wavered. We're not doing the we told we you so not. game. But obviously none of us have been fans of Julius. Right. At least you and I. <laughs> but when he says after the game, maybe they want it more. Yeah. No, he's right though, Craig. You can all get pissed off about it, and you should be. He's right. Watch the game. Yeah, but they, they want it more. That's how they're playing. To me, you're speaking for yourself. They wanted it more than you did. And now here's what's going to happen. And I said this to Evan off the air. Uh, since you guys can uh, hear what I say off the air, I'm going to allow you to hear it today on the air as well. One of two things is going to happen tomorrow night at Madison Square Garden. Either the Knicks are going to be listless and get blown out, which is absolutely on the table, or they win a close game. I do think the series goes back to Miami. And I'm not going to be some jackass going, the Knicks are going to win all three. Could they? Yeah, they could. Are they going to? Not the way they played uh, the first four, I can tell you that. So that being said, do the Knicks show up tomorrow and do we get a spirited effort or do we get number 30, you know, giving us the thumbs down tomorrow because we're going to give them the business. Mm. And tomorrow night is going to be a very tough night for Julius Randle if he gets off to an 0 for 4, two fouls, and he's sitting on the sideline. It's more than that, though. I think the Nick fan is where I give you guys credit. You're a smart basketball fan. It's not just going to be missing shots. It's going to be if we see you not closing out aggressively, yeah. if we see you giving up and not fighting through a screen, if we see you sightseeing while your team is watching Miami move the basketball all over the court, if we watch that kind of crap, then yeah. you're right, boos are going to rain down. Yeah. Because that, to me is the biggest problem with him. Yeah. Like, he didn't have a bad offensive night last night. 
He didn't. Oh, so his I, problem is that his effort from the get-go and his body language from the get-go wasn't there. And what's so mind-boggling to me is I can't figure out why. Like, I can't figure out no, in I the agree. fourth game of the postseason why right from the beginning yeah. he had that look on his face yep. that we've seen all too often. Yep. And uh, you have three bad shots and he's in He's in like uh, the tank. Yeah, you know, I, I may go tomorrow night. Because now I kind of want to be there next to the bench to find out exactly what goes on. So I'm thinking about going. Well, now. I think you need to be there because yeah. the last time you were there, you gave RJ Barrett all this power. I and RJ's credit. Juice. I think RJ played relatively well last night. I think you need to be there to give Julius some power. No, 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 no. I'm going there to listen. Just to listen? I'm going there. Obviously, I want the Knicks to win. You're not going there to save I'm, the Knicks? I'm going there. Listen. I can only do what I do. I've got magic fingers. We all know this. Proven over the course of 20 years on the air here. Mm -hmm. If I go to the game tomorrow night, I'm going, A, to watch my Knicks win. Because I do think, I honestly, I think they either get blown out and they don't show up, which I think is absolutely on the table, or they win a close, tough game and force the game six down in Miami, which has to be Friday night, I guess. That is correct. Um, That that could happen. Now, I'm not going to get crazy about it. Because I don't know what Nick team is showing up tomorrow night. Hopefully one that's got some pride and self-respect. Because that's my hope. A little pride, a little self-respect, win game five, give the Nick fans a final W at home, and then I, roll the dice I, in a game six. I don't six. think there's anything about what happened in game four or game three that would give you confidence, but I will I, say this. I don't have any. No, and you shouldn't. I'm not going to try to talk you into that, but I am never a believer that 3-1 means a death sentence. I, no, I just don't. very hard to it, come back from it, but it's not a death it sentence. It can happen. Yeah. And also, you've got two of three games in your own building. Yeah, like, I agree. It's very easy to say, let's go win game five, and now all of a sudden we're in a position, oh, can we steal a game six and bring yeah. it back to the Garden? So it's not about the math. It's not about coming back from 3-1. It's about this roster. It's about this team. It's about this head coach. It's about making shots. It's about getting killed on the glass. It's about being sloppy with turnovers. It's about Mitchell Robinson not being able to hit a free throw. It's about so many different things yeah. that caused last night to be a freaking mess. How about that sequence? And I think this was the third quarter when – you have Quentin Grimes, and I forget who was it next to him, where they drop the easy rebound right underneath the basket. It was yeah. moments like that. Like, you can't give Miami second chances, third chances, fourth chances. This is what you did to Cleveland. All right. How about thinking you're Michael Jordan, you're going to try to dunk from the free throw line? Yeah, the Grimes thing was. I mean, yeah, it would have been great, yeah. but just lay the ball in. Well, you also, when you cock back like that to go for a dunk, you're giving Jimmy Butler much more time, yeah. and it becomes more predictable, yeah. as opposed with the little razzle-dazzle laid in off the glass. Meanwhile, so the Knicks embarrassed themselves last night. After the game, Julius Randle's stupid and says stupid things about how they wanted it more than us. And then uh, while we're all trying to get over the uh, the situation with the Knicks, it looks like uh, your boy, pretty boy, Matt Scherz is done for the year. So that's not, that can't be something that makes you happy. Well, he's not done for the season. Seems like he's done for Matt the year. Matt Scherzer yesterday yeah. while you were in the bathroom revealed yeah. to all of us his latest excuse, which yeah. is, I don't suck because I suck. I suck because I'm hurt. And I'm yeah. going to battle through it. And I don't yeah. want to talk about it even all though I sudden, am talking about it. Yeah. And I don't want to go on the injured list. And I'm just going to battle. And my answer to him was, it's a long-ass season. If you're freaking hurt, I'd rather see you on the injured list. Well, guess what happens today? Now there's rumors that he's going to be scratched. David Peterson's in Cincinnati. Listen, no one wants to hear excuses. Yeah. If you're hurt, then don't pitch. That's it. Yeah, but that's all it is right now is excuses. Until you find out more... Right now, it's excuses. And all I've heard from Max is excuses, because last year when he got bombed against the Padres, 24 hours later, there's Ken Rosenthal saying, boy, spoke to Max before the game. He's battling. He's trying to fight through the injury. None of us care if you're hurt. We care if you're effective. And Max Scherzer's been bad. So here's my answer to this. All right, the scrapula injury, scapula, whatever the hell it is. If he's hurt, don't pitch, okay? Yeah. I'd rather see you on the injured list, hopefully getting better, for somewhere down the road as opposed to going into Cincinnati and giving up six runs in three yeah, and two thirds. And I'll do you one better. If you're hurt, be hurt. Don't use uh, bad performances as, oh, well, you know, I was hurt, therefore I'm not pitching well. Well, that's what you do. Just when you it. do own an it. interview with Mike Puma and say, hey, I'm hurt, don't want to talk about it, don't want to use it as an excuse, yeah. you just did. Exactly right. If I'm a po- tough guy, but I'm hurt. Right. No, 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 it's no, not no, an no, excuse no. bought. Yeah. <laughs> Come well, on. So i tell you what. Uh, just a week and a half ago, Everybody was feeling pretty good. And now look at us. The Knicks are on the precipice of being knocked out. 
They ain't nobody playing hockey anymore. Well, the Devils are. The New York Mets are under 500. Big game tonight, New Jersey down 2-1. New York Yankees are in last place. Where the hell did the year go? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Good news for us, though, is we have a big softball game coming up on uh, Saturday, June 17th over at the Staten Island Ferry Hawk Stadium to benefit the Joseph Lem Foundation. And I'm very excited about it. Team Carton and Roberts against Team Tiki and Tierney. All the money goes to charity. It's going to be a great Saturday night in Staten Island. I've gotten Evan a one-day pass to be in Staten Island. I got Ralph's coming. I got Danino's coming. I held myself back even from yeah. when you said it's going to be a great Saturday night in Staten Island. I was going to say, well, that's a first. Yeah. <laughs> I got Belly Bocce Bakery coming by. Oh, it's going to be quite the night. So we're going to eat our yeah. faces off. Tickets will go on sale later this week uh, through the Staten Island Ferry Hawk uh, ticketing uh, website. And uh, I don't want to name names, but it is a star-studded event to raise money for uh, the Superman of Cops who sadly gave his life in Afghanistan a number of years ago. So much more information coming up, but we're very, very excited about it. And I want to thank FAN for allowing us to do it and uh, promoting it. And Gary Prone and the Staten Island Ferry Hawks for giving us a place to play. And all the celebrities that are going to be coming by Evan. This is like a sports fans. If I may use the term wet dream, I'm going to use it here. This is a who's who <laughs> of sports figures that are going to be playing in this softball game. Yeah. And Tiki and Tierney have no chance. <laughs> well, you don't no know who they have on their all. roster. Uh, listen, I know it was on our roster. They have. N- I, I don't even know if there's any Giants left for Tiki to draft. <laughs> I think I got all of them. I got all of them. Take all the Giants. I got all of them, Evan. <sighs> it's going to be great. Uh, sadly, uh, Tommy and Big Mac will not be playing in this game. Um, what happened? But you'll be there. What do you there. mean I'm not playing in the game? Oh, I'm playing in the game. You'll be there. No, I'm playing in the game. Uh, maybe I'll give you an inning. No, no, I'll give you I, a, one at bat, one inning in the field. No, okay. not, not good enough. Not good enough? No, not good enough. Uh, you tell me which one of these guys yeah. that you're playing uh, instead of. Every one of them. You tell me who, <laughs> I, you tell me who I'm going to pull out of the game. Yeah. Uh, comedian Chris DiStefano. Yeah, he can, he can get pulled. Is that right? That yeah. was the first name you come up with, a comedian? He can, he can entertain the front row. Uh, <laughs> former defensive tackle, uh, Gerald McCoy. Yeah, no problem. Former quarterback, Ryan Leaf. Yeah. Uh, former Yankee, Ryan Leaf. Uh, Yankee star, Jim Lairitz. Former uh, Major League play. Baseball star, Harold Reynolds. He gave, he's giving it to Jimmy. Yeah. How about I'm Harold Reynolds? No. Harold Reynolds all right? Harold Reynolds is fine. He's Harold Reynolds is okay? He's not playing a second longer than I yeah. am. Josh Norman. Omar Minaya. Oh, Josh Norman. Jim Brewer. Michelle Beadle. Yeah. These are just invites. They don't know these people have confirmed yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. These are some of the people that have been invited. Oh, sure. are they? So yeah. they're not confirmed, like Al me Leiter, ready to go sleeping in my cleats? Al Leiter, Tim Hardaway. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, Tim Hardaway? No, that's thanks. That's right. Robert Wool. I do like Robert Wool. Yeah. Craig I have a Jennings. Questions for Robert Wool. James Jones. Aaron Rodgers. John <laughs> Aaron Douglas. Rogers. I can't imagine that. I tell you what, if you bring Aaron Rodgers there, I'll sit. Yeah. Sauce I'll Gardner. Sit for yeah. Justin Tuck. Michael Strahan. Should I keep going yeah, or not? Strahan's got enough things to do. He could, he could, you know, he'll show up for an inning, wave his Ronde tip his Barber, cap, wave his hand. Tiki Barber. Ronde Little Barber's Barber. playing on our team? That Big. would be quite a turn. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I told McCoy to invite him. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Anyhow, it's going to be great. It's coming up on uh, June 17th, which is a Saturday night in Staten Island. And it's going to be a great night for charity. And we're very, that's a crazy week, by the way. Monday, That's the week of the Pete Alonzo comedy event. Monday night, June 12th, we have the uh, comedy night at Paramount out at Huntington, Long Island. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Subway Series. Yep. Yankees, Mets, right? Yep. Yeah. And then Saturday... We've got, it's the only softball game we're playing this year. That's, a, what, that's it? It is the One only. One and done? This is it. It is the only softball game we are committed to playing this yeah, year. Yeah, he gave up on the Carton versus Roberts game after I beat his ass last year. I get that. That makes sense. I respect that. Oh, You wait. don't want to take another L. That's, a, that's totally a private that. game. That's a private <laughs> game. We can deal with that privately. No problem. <laughs> oh, Maggie Gray's going to play? Yes. There you go. Uh, she's on your uh, oh on our team, yeah. Yeah, she was the hero from the Carton versus Roberts game. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be just fantastic. We're all looking forward to it. It's going to be great, 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 great. I'm just Kenny Albert, my play. Plaxico Burris is coming. Who else do I have here? 
Let me just take a quick look, see if you don't mind. I mean, no offense. Some of the guys you yeah. said, I can understand Big Mac saying, well, I'm better than them. Yeah, like, 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 like Damian Woody. Who else? Well, every yeah. non-athlete. Big Mac's going to be like, I'm did. better than Kenny Albert. Uh, you probably are. Yeah. That I'll <laughs> give you. I'm not going to let you. are probably better than him. No yet. offense to Kenny. Yeah. I'm sure he's okay. Uh-huh. 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 But I could see him yeah. saying, oh, hey, I mean, come I on. Do you know my I, nickname was Hoover? I got Rick Hoffman from Suits. Because you were a vacuum at third I base. I was a vacuum at third base. <laughs> yeah. yeah at the buffet. I got Kevin Connolly from Entourage fame. Uh, yep. I got them all. Look at that. No problem with fat jokes, but that doesn't make any sense. Look at that. Chris Russo. Chris Russo. Chris Russo. Constantine Manukalis. And isn't yeah. that my I love that, He can buddy. sing the national anthem, but I'm playing. I got Eddie House, <laughs> former uh, Nick. Oh, Celtic. Former, former Nick. Keith McPherson. Chris Mano. I mean, John Franco. Uh, who else did I invite? Mm-hmm. 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 Lots of people, buddy. It's going to be great. Anyway, we'll get into uh, Julius Randle and the New York Knicks uh, screwing up uh, our pre-Memorial Day fun. And, uh, of course, uh, you Met fans are dealing with the reality that uh, your best pitcher is about to go on the IL and may miss the rest of the season. That's what Evan told me. Coming to you live from Never the Town Fair that. Tire Studios, powered by Town Fair Tire. I just said he's an excuse-making 40-year-old yeah. washed-up husband. Yeah. That's all I said. 